viewers, you are all welcome to a wonderful edition of the program Living Legends in memory of the divine drama Kofi Ganaba. I was christened Warren Gamaliel Akwei. My father's family bore the name Akwei. So it was Warren Gamaliel Akwei. The Warren Gamaliel came from uh, America's president, Warren Gamaliel Harding, who died in 1923, the year I was born. Warren Gamaliel Harding, and I was named Warren Gamaliel Akwey. So, when the American fever caught me, and my friends in the Gold Coast, because the GIs were here, and we all wanted to go to America. I shortened the Gamaliel to Guy. And instead of Warren Gamaliel, I made it Guy Warren. And that's what happened. So it was Gamaliel shortened to Guy, because I wanted to Yankee my name. What is interesting about Kofi Ganaba is how he developed and got to the point where he became an international figure. Because you know, he was in, uh, in the US and uh, he was going to play his own music and join, you know, people were playing jazz and so forth. But he went also with the idea that his own music was important and he wanted to find ways of blending, you know, what was going on with this. This was also a time when we were conscious of our own identity and his consciousness of his African identity so strong, uh, was so strong that, you know, it pervaded everything that he did. And if you look at his evolution, this is the thing that held him, you know, and helped him to assert himself. Uh, in many ways, you know, he was uh, extraordinary, uh, not only in terms of the combination that he used, but also in terms of the energy and, uh, and so forth that uh, he showed, and how he was able to show the power of drums, you know, through polyrhythms and all sorts of things that he, that he was able to display. So musically, he was very important. I had very great respect for him and for his way of thinking about how to move his own tradition forward. Time was when people perceived me as a freak, which I was. I was a freak, man. I, I did things which, which didn't tally with the ordinary. I was a freak. But now, uh, I'm no longer, I, 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 I'm not classified as a freak. I'm, I'm just classified as, <laughs> this will make you laugh, someone who is very hard to know or to come close. How do you perceive your father? Well, my daddy liked to be by himself. But sometimes there's contradiction is his lifestyle. He's an entertainer. In other words, you deal with people. You go and entertain people. But at the end of the entertainment, he wants to be isolated and be by himself. He doesn't want to know about anybody coming. You have to be uh, and have a, uh, appointments. You know, like he starts to stay away from people. But at the same time, he likes to entertain people. So he's not really a high hard person. It's, it's, it's just that he wants to do his own thing. When he decides to do something, nobody's going to change him, his mind. And so people might claim that he's a hard person, but when you get to him, he's very jovial, he's entertainer. So I don't see how he will be hard on people. You know what I mean? Maybe he'll be hard to the people that are close to him, but not to the masses. Yeah. He loves people. Some people think he's a crazy man. 
I mean, people have told him that, oh, don't follow that mad man. A lot of people think he's not serious. But now, we will see who is not serious. Whether it's the world which is not serious, or he is the one who is not serious. Ganaba knew where he was going, and he doesn't care what the world thought about him. He has a mission, and he knows. He's very much aware of himself. He knows himself thoroughly. So he doesn't mind what you, people say. You know, there's this Buddhist saying which guides him a lot, that if a traveler does not meet his equal or is better on the path, it's better he keeps to his solitary path because there's no companionship in the fool. Ganaba loves silence. He loves to meditate. He loves to, above everything else, aside from my music, I love to read. I, I, I read, uh, not voraciously, but when I read a book, I've read it. When did you really caught up with your daddy musically? Well, I started playing with my father at the age of nine. And, and I was in the primary school at that time. So we've been playing together and sharing so many ideas. I've been following him, watching him. We've been to secondary schools all over Ghana to perform. We've done to the armed forces. We played for the police orchestra and all those kind of things. So I grew up with him uh, on that level. So musically, uh, it has been a long time. But unfortunately, uh, we're not able to come together for the world to hear is that, oh, Ghana had a son. He was a dynamite drum player. You can ask people from my side, they will tell you. you. Can even ask all the guys that are in my age group at that time, whether it's in Achimota or wherever, they will tell you. And I didn't capitalize on my talent, so we were like Tom and Jerry. We did that, 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 that until I decided to go to the states and left my daddy. You know, but then we've been coming back to team up at the end of his time that's when we really started doing something just like this album we just did the last recorded album of my father you know so this is the story <laughs> even though he concentrated on his African things, he was versatile. As I've mentioned, he has recordings of even Western music and so forth. But he knew how to use these. He knew how to fit into the new world. And this is why Ganaba has made such an impact. People, in fact, people wonder about the, how he arrived at the position he, he took and the kind of skills and so forth he developed. So that is why I'm interested in uh, Kofi, uh, he used to be called Kofi Ganaba. I'm interested in uh, memorializing him through an award or prize, an award you know, uh, scheme so that we keep his memory alive. When he was alive, he was a living legend. Now we want him to continue to be a legend. You can be, one can be heavyweight or lightweight. Uh, both are acceptable. 
I would say that the man who plays Stravinsky is more enlightened than the man who plays uh, Ashiko music or uh, Mahafali music. But the thing is, I am concerned with the lifestyle which goes with the musicians. Uh, this myth that the musician uh, loves women, he drinks and loves a good time and let's roll, let's roll, <coughs> and burn, burn the fuses, that type of thing. That, that, that image is bad. That's why many parents don't want their, their children to be musicians. So, uh, the, the, to me, the lifestyle of the individual musician is the important thing. You know, people will take you cheap if you play cheap. And, uh, they will take you serious if you are serious. If that myth can be broken, if that myth can be broken or changed or or corrected, corrected is the thing. We don't have a system in Ghana which would do this, correct the cultural decadence and, 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 and uh, retrieve us from the abyss into which our culture is sinking every day. Um, he, he's one of the pioneers who fought for, for, for us to be able to have, you know, the leeway, you know, of going to America and uh, interact with these musicians. And Kofi Ganaba, you know, with his drums and everything, you know, he was also, you know, every time trying to play the African thing. You know, he was in London too, you know, and he has a way of uh, enticing his audience and things like that. You know, and he'll be speaking Ga, you know, in your film or you know, he has some language that we speak. They didn't understand what he was saying, but all of them would say, Yeah. It was part of the music. It was part of it. <laughs> you know, but we know what he was saying. Yeah. And maybe what he was saying wasn't right, you know. <laughs> but they didn't understand it. So yeah, they accepted. I said, Yeah, man. You know, and he got away with so many things. Right. You know, because he was always himself and never wanted to be anybody until he even changed his name to Kofi Ganaba because initially he was called Guy Warren. Oh, yeah. You know, we all, when we were, you know, growing up, Americanized, you know, uh, things were, you know, straight into our minds. I mean, all of us were, you know, even using American names and all that. Yeah. <laughs> but when you get to a certain point, you say, no, man, there's got to be a turnaround. And Kofi Ganaba did it. With this Guy Warren, he changed it to Kofi Ganaba because he said he's a son of Ghana. You know, born on Friday, so it was Kofi Ganaba, and that was fantastic. going to catch on and spread. So my legacy, not necessarily to America, but to the world, is my album, Africa Speaks America Answers. When I was making that album, I had this thought in mind that if I made the album and stepped out of the studio into the street and got knocked down by a car, I would have done what I came into the world to do. So the album was very well spaced. All the numbers were played differently and all the numbers were, were uh, uh, little gems by themselves. Africa Speaks American Answers. That is my legacy to the world. Until same time next week, we'll be coming your way with another edition of the program Living Legends in memory 
I mean, words cannot describe Kofi Ganaba. Therefore, this program will still remain in his memory. Make a date with us, same time, same place next week. Thank you.